And welcome back here on Live Now from Fox. Once again, taking a live look at the Supreme Court as we continue to talk about the rulings from this morning. The Supreme Court using the case of a Christian mailman who didn't want to work Sundays to solidify protections for workers who asked for religious accommodations. In a unanimous decision, the justices made clear that workers who ask for accommodations like taking the Sabbath off should get them unless their employers show doing so would result in, quote, substantial increased cost to the business. Andrew Lieb is a legal analyst, a friend of the show with Lieb at Law, and joins us now live to talk more about all of this. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Josh, thanks for having me. What an important decision that's going to change workers throughout the United States today. I can't under discuss, underestimate how important this decision is. And kind of break it down for me. Why is this uh, something that so many people are paying attention to, talking about, and what does it mean for workers in the U.S.? Well, I'm going to do it two ways. I'll tell you legally and then I'll tell you effectively how it's going to affect everyone. Legally, we have a decision from 50 years ago that explained how you're supposed to do employment law, like how employment law, it's called Title VII, you might have heard of it, the EEOC, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, how you need to deal with an employee that wants an accommodation. What is an accommodation? A change of a policy, a procedure of the job, and usually we hear about it when it comes to either disability or handicap or religion. So in this situation, this evangelical Christian said, hey, listen, I think the Sabbath is a day of rest. I shouldn't have to go deliver mail everywhere. That's the Sabbath on Sunday. I don't need to do that. And the lower court, the district court, they said, you got no case. 50 year ago precedent, it says, as long as the employer can show more than a de minimis, a de minimis cost, they can deny you. This changes it. Employees have so much more rights today. In the fact, what we learn, a 9-0 decision by Alito, Josh, here's what it says. Now, if you are a religious person and you ask for an accommodation, it's a holiday that's not recognized by your employer. It's the Sabbath. You need to wear a different outfit. You need to have a different head covering. Your employer needs to give that to you except if it's going to be a substantial hardship, which is going to be a fact determinative decision. And no longer can they say, oh, it's just going to be a little cost de minimis. It changes everything. Employees have so many more rights today than they did earlier this morning at 10 o'clock when this came out. The world of employee rights changed, Josh. This is a huge decision. And do you think this is the decision that folks were expecting? A lot of people are talking about the cases with affirmative action. You're also hearing about uh, President Biden's student loan payment plan that is still yet to be decided here. This is one that it seems that not a lot of people were paying as close attention to. Do you think this is what people expected was going to happen? Well, of the three cases you just named, affirmative action, student loan, and this one, this one's going to have the most impact on regular people's jobs. I could tell you that without a shadow of a doubt. The majority of the population doesn't go to college. The majority of the population that goes to college isn't affected by affirmative action. It's really a minimal conversation. Same conversation with student loan, college. But everyone works. Well, not everyone, but a lot of people work. The majority of people have work. Their family works. They need money. And so, Josh, what's unexpected is 9-0. No dissent. We have some concurring opinions, but Justice Alito striking down 50 years of precedent, changing employment law that says basically like this, you have to change your policy as employer to allow someone that has a religious need to still do their job so long as they can do the essential functions of their job with the accommodation. And the only way you can deny them is a fact intensive which goes to what type of business you are, what your resources are, how much money you're making, how many people work there. The only way you can deny them, Josh, is if you say, we just substantially can't afford this. We're no longer with a de minimis standard. Employers better speak to employment counsel today, change the rules, and we're going to have a, 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 a floods of lawsuits coming in. And these decisions are fairly immediate, right? This would happen as of the time that the ruling came out. 
Yeah, about, I would say it's like 10.07 it came out. I don't know the exact time. It's immediately changed the law across the United States. A broad law. It changed this case from, I, I said it was 50 years ago, an EEOC, Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. They're supposed to advocate for employees. If you go on their website, they would say if an employer could deny you with a de minimis standard. And today, employees have so many more rights and immediately changed. And if someone comes to a boss today and says, listen, I know that you don't celebrate, I don't know, let's say Rosh Hashanah. You're not closed for Rosh Hashanah, I'm Jewish. I'd like to change the date. If the employer does not change the date, you have an employment discrimination of the date that person has to work, and that's going to be actionable discrimination. You have that for every religion. You think about people that are Muslim, Buddhist, Jain. You're, as an employer, better be up to speed about all of these religions. And by the way, here's the most interesting part about religious discrimination. It doesn't even have to be one of the goals or rules or protocols of the religion, so long as it's a sincerely held belief by the individual, even if it's straight with the teaching of the Pope and you're Catholic, it's still a religious accommodation you are entitled to and you can get it. This is huge, Josh. For sure. Is there anything else that you do want to add about this specific uh, ruling here? I think that it really shows you at 9-0, Josh, that these, these justices are legal scholars first and foremost. We like to pigeonhole them as they got the liberals, they got the conservatives, and yes, sometimes that's true. But I have to tell you, we had majority opinions that were uh, immigration and and voting rights, and they span the gambit. And today, affirmative action. And now this is a real employee, employee favorable decision. Usually conservatives are employer favorable. So I think the legitimacy of the court is intact, specifically with a 9-0 decision from Alito. And moving forward, I would be very careful if you run a business or you're a manager in these United States about denying a religious accommodation, better speak to an attorney before even responding to the request, Josh. And I do want to get kind of your thoughts now that the ruling has come down about affirmative action essentially being barred from being used when you're talking about higher education here. What are your thoughts on that and what does that mean implication wise? Well, my first thought was why they have to write 237 pages. I'm going to be up all night reading this thing. Like, it just keeps going and going and going. Like, the other one was in the pages of the 30s. This one's 237. But as a matter of fact, here's my thought. There's a famous author named Malcolm Gladwell, and I like reading him. And he argues that finishing in the top of your class at a lower-ranking university has better long-term career effects than finishing in the bottom of your class in a better university. So being in the top of a worse university is better than the bottom of a better one. So a lot of liberals are saying right now, hey, this is bad for people. People are never going to get a leg up. They're never going to get a chance. But let's go back to the Backey decision, which is what it was based on. And in that decision, they said it wasn't about giving a leg up to minorities. It was about creating a more robust exchange of ideas, Josh. So even if you were going to go with not the basis of this, maybe it's actually a benefit to minorities to not have this decision because they were becoming the worst in class instead of the best in lower tier universities. I will tell you though, Josh, it's gonna have a major ripple effect. Race conscious, race plus admissions is no longer allowed in this United States. We have a 6-3 decision. We have it based on the Equal Protection Clause on Title VI. Gorsuch wrote separately about Title VI. It's a very impactful decision. And in this era, Josh, this is the key. We are on a pendulum swing where we don't want reverse discrimination. And I think that's what Lied the day. No reverse discrimination in these United States, Josh. All right. Andrew Lieb, legal analyst there with Lieb at Law. Thank you so much as always for taking the time to join us and help break down these big stories. Such a pleasure. Thank you.